No, Wonder Woman 1984 did not save the DC Cinematic Universe, in case you were wondering. And I hope you didn't think it would. So let's begin. You know, one of the biggest things they teach you in film school when in the process of even thinking to make a film is, why tell this story? Why must this be made right now? And to be honest, I don't see a valid reason for Wonder Woman 1984's existence. But before I tell you what I didn't like, let me tell you a couple things that I actually really enjoyed. It's not that much, so don't get your hopes up. Let me begin with perhaps the strongest thing in this movie, in my opinion which is the relationship between Diana and Steve. I honestly didn't know how he'd be brought back, but I didn't mind the way they did it. Both actors play off each other so well, and as the movie continues to build, one of the few things that you actually care for as the viewer is their relationship. One can argue that bringing Steve back was lazy writing and just done so Diana could have her own tie into the problem, but I guess it's acceptable when it works well. I love their big scenes together, like the scene when they're flying through the fireworks. It was awesome, and it seriously put a smile on my face. And that scene was what made their goodbye an even stronger story point for me, because you know how much Diana actually cares for Steve. And although this relationship doesn't really add anything of value to the current timeline of the DC Cinematic Universe, I still wanted to point this out because I genuinely enjoyed their relationship on screen. Another moment that I enjoyed was Diana learning to fly. Although, correct me if I'm wrong, but she doesn't fly in Batman vs Superman or Justice League, right? Either way, it was a cool sequence. Unfortunately, until it wasn't. I don't know what it is with pretty much every DCEU movie after Man of Steel, but most have trash CGI. And towards the end of the flying scene, it didn't look convincing anymore. There were points in which her hair wasn't even flowing correctly, and that just threw me off completely. They had the perfect example on how to execute the learning to fly sequence by simply watching Superman do it in Man of Steel. But moving on, probably the main thing that made these scenes worth mentioning for me was Hans Zimmer's score. He's truly fantastic and his work elevates anything that you see on screen. That's simple. So now let's dive into everything else, which unfortunately is pretty mediocre to be honest. So right off the bat, that beginning sequence in the mall is extremely extremely cheesy and it just didn't look or feel like a movie that cost 200 million dollars to make or better yet a quality superhero movie the first action sequence in Themyscira was somewhat forgivable because it had elements of the first movie but even then we really only needed that scene so the main theme of the movie which is truth could be laid out to the viewers but man the things achieved nowadays with CGI are fantastic so there really is no reason why a studio like Warner Brothers should look at this shot of her riding a horse and be okay with it. Okay, okay, I understand. That might have been a little too much criticism. Obviously that shot would be pretty impossible to actually nail. I think I'm just still really upset about this shot from the first movie. You see what I mean? The thing I'm trying to say is if you can't pull it off correctly, then just don't do it because it'll take your viewer out of the movie. Plain and simple. Now. Let's look at the villains. See, I love Pedro Pascal. I think he is truly an awesome actor, but I really didn't like the character of Max Lord. I think every superhero movie fan out there can tell you that one of the main things we look for is a memorable villain with some sort of depth. And obviously DC has this issue when it comes to their films, and this was no exception. I'm not saying we should get a Thanos type villain every time, but looking at the other side, we have characters like Loki, Vulture, and Killmonger. I feel like the closest thing DC has right now to a memorable villain is Zod. And that's not saying much. See, the issue with Max Lord is that he only wants one thing. More. Literally, just more. He says it about 30 times in the movie. So here we have a character whose big master plan is to pretty much manipulate everyone in the planet using a device, causing pretty much the end of the world while he gets what he wants. Wait, what is it that he wanted again? Oh, that's right, more. And obviously they only gave him a son so he could tap back into his humanity when it's convenient for the plot. Just not a great character. And I'm going to keep Cheetah short and simple. Someone in the writing staff watched The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and for some reason fell in love with the character of Electro and decided it was a good idea to bring basically the same character into this movie. 
They are both introduced to be clumsy characters with low self-esteem who run into a source of power, then proceed to hate the hero and also work with the main bad guy. The only thing I liked about Cheetah is her fight at the end with Wonder Woman when she was tearing up the suit because it did some good showcasing the brute strength of her character. Also, all that hype for the new suit just for it to be ripped apart in like two minutes? I feel like that suit was just made to throw in some hype in the trailers and so we can get that end credit scene, which I actually liked. Getting a new suit is supposed to be a big moment for superheroes, like in Aquaman or Spider-Man in Far From Home. Overall, my main problem with this movie is that it doesn't fit in with the rest. These cheesy and quirky characters don't really seem to be from the same universe as a darker film like Batman vs Superman or the first Wonder Woman. And I guess that works sometimes, like in Shazam, which is passable because of the core subject of that movie, a literal child superhero. To reach the end, I gotta say that action sequence towards the middle of the movie that took place on the road was just not good. It didn't make sense and it wasn't entertaining to me. Her running fast does not look compelling, which is what I don't understand. If Marvel can do it, why can't DC? I definitely feel like maybe I bashed this movie a bit too hard. It could just be because I've been binging Ink Master all week and the nitpicking of the judges on that show has gotten to me or because I genuinely want to see the characters done justice. Because I love the DC heroes and I think there is so much potential for great stories and movies to be made here. Sometimes it's just not being executed properly. To finally finish off, I'll leave you with this. Why do you think this movie was made? Thank you guys for watching, please subscribe, and feel free to recommend me anything to watch down in the comments. Bye.